Hi everyone. Welcome to the BioEdge. Sea snakes eat eels, but eels do not eat sea snakes. That's a very interesting observation. Why would it be that in a sea full of fishes, in which the fishes were the animals that originally evolved in the sea and have long since radiated out uh, in, a, in, in myriad forms to fill all kinds of niches, including a, um, a, a, an ostensibly snake-like niche in the case of the um, serpentine f- uh, fish form that we know as eels. How is it possible that snakes, which evolved on land, have not only had the gall to um, reinvade the sea, snatching niches away from serpentine fishes on their own turf, but even have the gall to to eat the eels without the eels ostensibly being able to um, reciprocate the insult, as it were, by by um, eating sea snakes. So th- th- this this particular biological puzzle is is part of a larger puzzle, and and that larger puzzle is that not only sea snakes, but also uh, various other land vertebrate groups, including sea turtles and penguins and other seabirds and um, whales, cetaceans, seals, sea lions, and even sea otters, all of these land-based, air-breathing animals have somehow found a niche for themselves in the sea where you would think that um, there are so many fishes with with, uh, so many different life forms and having had such a long history of opportunity in, in radi- radiating out into every possible uh, ecological niche, would long ago have, have uh, excluded such invasion by land animals. So we have a general pattern of air-breathing animals reinvading the sea and doing things that fishes don't seem able to do, including eating fishes. And this is epitomized, as it were, by the, the sea snakes, which, which form a particularly close comparison with the eels because they're so similar in their serpentine, extremely simple cylindrical um, uh, body shapes. So one possibility is that um, because the oxygen dissolved in water is far less abundant than the oxygen in air, um, any kind of animal that has gills and relies on its oxygen supply from dissolved oxygen absorbed into the bloodstream through gills has extremely limited metabolic power. It's difficult to be powerful in an environment where the oxygen that gives you your respiratory power is in, a, in an extremely uh, uh, scarce form, such as dissolved oxygen. Whereas, by contrast, an air-breathing animal has a lot more access to oxygen because the air is 20% oxygen. And many fold the availability of oxygen in the water and, and that even, even though the, 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 uh, the air-breathing marine vertebrates have the apparent disadvantage of having to come back to the air surface um, to, to breathe and then dive back down into the sea, nonetheless, they have far greater metabolic power because they are uh, far more aerobic than any fish can be. Now, that may work, for example, um, in, in explaining penguins and sea lions and the way that they seem to uh, prey on fish with impunity without fishes being able to, um, to eat them. But in the case of, of this puzzle of the sea snakes and the eels, it doesn't seem to work because, if anything, it's the eels that have the greater muscle, muscle um, mass uh, and, and, and the greater um, metabolic power in the sense that an eel is, is, is almost always more muscular than a comparable sea snake. A sea snake is is an extremely reduced organism in the sense that it has a fairly small mouth. It's really just a cylinder of tissue with an extremely long stomach and a short, non-muscular tail, whereas the eel eaten by the sea snake is usually an extremely muscular animal that has um, half or more of its body devoted to a muscular tail. And so the, the, the idea of sea snakes simply overpowering the eels that they eat by means of um, an aerobic physiology and, and muscle power doesn't seem to work. So what could be the other metabolic advantage available to sea snakes of being an air-breathing animal in a world of, of, of gilled um, fishes? Well, 
the obvious um, difference between them is venom, because no eel, as far as we know, is venomous, whereas all sea snakes are venomous. And when a sea snake subdues and swallows an eel, it envenomates it first with extremely strong venom and really puts it out of action. Now, you may ask, well, why is it that the eels of the world have not evolved snake-like venom? Well, it's true to say that there's no fish at all among the thousands of species of fishes worldwide that uses venom to subdue prey. There are some fishes that use venom self-defensively by having venom sacs at the base of stiff spines so that if you stand on the fish or try to, to engulf it, you'll get envenomated by the defensive um, spines. But no fish seems to have evolved venom sacs in its mouth that can be used to, um, to subdue any kind of prey. And that's possibly because this is where, again, the, the aerobic capacity of sea snakes comes in handy because it is far more metabolically costly to produce venom than it might seem at first glance. And so it could be that um, uh, the reason why it is the sea snakes that produce the venom and not the eels is that the sea snakes being oxygen-rich, air-breathing animals have a greater metabolic uh, ability to afford venom, whereas eels, no matter how long they evolve, will never evolve that capacity because ultimately they're limited by being um, animals with gills living in a world in which dissolved oxygen is, is present in very limited supply, and that limits the uh, capacity of eels to fight back against sea snakes, either in um, retaining their niches and, and preventing the sea snakes from usurping niches, or in the actual uh, combat situation where um, the eel is, is, is attacked by the sea snake and engulfed by it. So that's a new take on, on the uh, strange asymmetry between two ostensibly uh, serpentine life forms, eels and sea snakes. And uh, with that in mind, we look forward to seeing you for another topic next time at the BioEdge. Bye.